Oh yeah? Yeah. Wow, that'd be fun. Whenever you guys are ready. Well that could be a great look. Let's talk about this kind of thing first. So this is Kitty Daisy and Lewis here in LA kind of meeting with Hollywood and doing a, this is all new and exciting. What's this been like kind of this LA thing for the band? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's like uh it's really good weather and everything, everyone's really, really nice and you get looked after really well, so it's good. It's quite happy. different to what we used to, like we used to playing in like tiny little clubs and stuff and having to do all the running around ourselves and everything, so mm -hmm. it's nice. But to be meeting with movie studios mm -hmm. and being out here in, in Hollywood, is yeah, this, was this kind of a dream? Was this expected that you'd be doing this at this point? Today, it feels a bit surreal, like, finally come to Hollywood and like, in the, seeing all the film sets and stuff, it's like, a bit weird. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How, is, how does it differ from what? you all expected what this would be like? Did you have certain impressions and, and what's what's the reality like for you? Um, well, I didn't even know we were going to be spending much time in LA. I thought it was just like one gig or, or two days here or something. Because um, we're doing the tour with Coldplay, I thought we were just going to be doing like a gig every day and just like completely tired and knackered all the time. But it's good having like some days off here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talk about the reaction to the music here in the States and what audiences have been like on tour, either in your own your own shows and these gigs with Coldplay, what's the reaction been like and what has that meant to Well it's hard because yeah. like we're the warm up act kind of thing, like the first people on. So it's hard because not everyone's quite there, everyone's settling down, so it's hard to get like you know what I mean, to, to get them listening. Especially um, as everyone's like seated as well. Yeah. But yesterday like, we had a gig where like everyone was standing up at the front, so yeah. that was like the best crowd we had like. Yeah. Like dancing. And yeah. So when when you get people like clapping and dancing along and stuff like that, that's like. Is there a moment in every gig when you know you kind of won them over? What kind of feeling goes like three, four songs in? You see that the, the audience that's there for Coldplay, they may not have obviously heard of you guys until they walked in the door. What's that feeling like when you see them singing along and shaking and? Um, well, yeah. Obviously, it's really nice to know that they're enjoying the music and when they start moving and getting into it. Like when we our first song we do like an a cappella where me and her just sing. Um and like they're all sitting down at the front and they all suddenly like stood up and it's like, Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whenever um Tantan, our trumpet player, walks on stage as well, he like screams down the mic like Rrr, to try and get them going. So <laughs> that always works. <laughs> you know, this this is a big opportunity for you guys to be on to be on this tour. talk about how this kinda came to pass uh, I think um I'm not sure who saw us. It might have been the band's manager or all the band. Um, they knew about us and they saw a gig and then they um they just asked if we wanted to go on tour with them. So like yeah. <laughs> but that speaks to your ability and their confidence in you guys to open a show like this, knowing you're gonna get the crowd going. They wouldn't pick someone that's gonna drive people out of the theater obviously, so knowing you guys have something special to play for. Yeah. It's quite good around. going on first rather than second because I think by the time the second band comes on they're all getting a bit impatient. <laughs> so I think first is good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talk about, you can take us back to the beginning. If you guys can you just say your name, say your age, first of all, because I think audiences are just, just love hearing this. I know because I've read the thing and I know a little bit about you. A lot of people still know who you are. If you just say your name, say your age, uh, first of all. I'm Kitty, I'm 16. Sorry, I've got to get that again. I'm Kitty, I'm 16. I'm Daisy, I'm 21. I'm Lewis, I'm 18. Now how, at what age do the three of you know this is going to be your passion, this is what you're going to be busy well, with? Well, there wasn't a time where it suddenly came to us and we thought, right, this is what we want to do. We've always had, like, music around the house and it's just, like, always been there, like, in our lives. So, um, we've always had, like, instruments knocking around and like someone would just go and pick up a guitar or something and next thing like we're all jamming together. Yeah, so. We never meant to form a band, it just kind of happened. For what reason? Were your parents into music? Were you just, uh, where that start to have instruments always in the house? That isn't that way for everybody. Where did that come from? Well like, the instruments in the house were just like stuff from like junk shops or whatever, like old guitars, like nothing, none of it was like bought purposely, like the, the guitar was like given to my dad and the piano he, he got from somewhere and all this stuff just accumulated. 
but um, they they weren't really playing like they weren't playing us blues and jazz and R and B and stuff like that. It was more like kind of the Kinks, T Rex, um, Gary Glitter. Like there was just like songs in the house. You know what I mean? Um, A bit of Elvis but, and Johnny Cash. Yeah, but nothing like what we play. Like, mm-hmm. um, and then like we started going to an afternoon like club in a pub and it was kind of like folk and stuff like that and then the guy asked me if I wanted to come and do a song with him so I did and then Kitty joined in on the drums and then we did it another time but my mum and dad weren't in it then um, and then later on like we needed a bass player so I told my mum she had to learn the bass and then my dad sat in on the guitar. So that's one of the opposite of the way most of these bands come where you guys invited your parents to... Yeah, they didn't want to be in it. We didn't invite them, we kind of forced them. <laughs> Mom, My dad on, used to be own. like really scared and like hide behind the speakers. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like for you as you guys are going to be time when you say, hey, Mom and Dad, I need some, some time on my own, or is this always kind of a joy to have them as part um, of what you're doing? No, nah, I wouldn't say that. It's not much a joy, but it's kind of, it just, it fits really, it just kind of... They're not the best musicians, and neither are we, but we just, we do just the way we work together just kind of fits. Mm-hmm. How did all three of you kind of agree that this was the kind of music you wanted to do, this was the image, this is the sound? If any one of you didn't want to do it, obviously it wouldn't be the same. This group. is the music we started jamming together, so that's just naturally what It's just what the we songs that to. we like to listen to and dance to, the songs that yeah. we like to play. Mm-hmm. And then, so we're, then we're playing them, and then we end up on stage, like, and then all of a sudden you're a band, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I suppose we don't really see it like that. We more see it as just like going up on the stage and like playing a few chords, you know. Mm-hmm. Are you guys protective of, of, of each other when you're out there and and you see girls going for this one or guys are going for these girls? You guys kind of bond together and. Not really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of take it as it comes, see what happens. Really. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. We to be honest, we don't really aim to to get anywhere. And we never have. We've never really asked for for anything. We've been really lucky. Um, and a lot of people ask us like, where where do you want to be in the future? Like, do you still want to be doing this? We don't actually know where we're going, what we'll be doing. So we're just kind of taking it as it comes. Mm-hmm. What's what what was the initial reaction like back home for people that don't know your story? When you first started playing gigs, talk about kind of how this all kind of started in terms of getting the record together and meeting the right people and getting the right manager. How did this all kind of well, I don't know, everything just sort of fell into place. It was like, like suddenly like people were saying, oh yeah, do you want to make a record and stuff like this? And then it was like... At gigs, they were like, have you got an album or a CD? We were like, no, we don't have anything. So, I don't know, we just thought, like... So then we signed a deal with, with Sunday Best Records in England. And then, because um, they felt right, because they were like, yeah, you can do what you want. Like, it's all relaxed and stuff, whereas majors are really uptight and like... Do you know what I mean? They, they, you might not even get a record out. So, um, and then we just basically recorded our live set, like um, in the studio we built, and then put it out. Mm-hmm. Talk about your kind of your stage presence. Because watching the three of you, it was very enjoyable to watch. There's kind of a there's a passion there, and there's there's an energy, and almost like a cool kind of '50s danger comes through when you're doing your thing. How much of that? What's going through your heads when you're actually bringing that? to life and you're doing your thing and you're up there doing your thing and you're all just kind of bringing it together and it's very you know, intriguing to watch. You know, it lo- looks very real and very genuine. Just talk about just kind of the feelings that are going through. I don't know, I feel like um, we're not really like show people. Like when we're playing the song, that's when we get into it. But as soon as the song ends and we're just standing there, like everyone's too embarrassed to say anything or like... My mum's going to say something. Yeah, say we're something. just like, uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, and it's like, so we're not really good at that stuff. But then when we start playing, that's... Because you know, I see I see us as musicians and not really people to go. Oh yeah, so I was walking down the street and blah blah blah. Do you know what I mean? Like in the middle of a song, it's like no one wants to hear that crap. Do you know what I mean? They want to hear the music. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. talk up, talk about the look. How much fun it is for you guys to to look this cool and get the clothes and how much time do you spend finding the right outfit and looking um, at what you do? Well, my mum actually made like one of my dresses that I wear mm. on stage. She's got like loads of old fifties dress patterns, and she's got loads of stuff lying in the attic as well. Um, but I don't know. You just kind of collect it over the years. There used to be some really good places like in London, 
in uh, Camden, but like everything's getting knocked down now, so mm. it's all going, so it's a bit sad. But. Mm. We went to some really good shops in LA though, last time we were here. Yeah. Got some good stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tell you what, the songs were this on this first this first record. Where these songs came from, and how'd you pick them? And some of the songs you wrote themselves, and the other songs, these songs you've been playing for years, these songs you put together for the well, record. Like a lot of them come from like our dad singing to us, like and just like handing down the songs, like in folk music, you know. And um, so like going up the country, which is the first track, like he used to sing to us, and like we hadn't actually heard any of the recorded records of that song and the same with the Hawaiian stuff and all that and like so we were playing these songs on stage because that's what we knew and uh, and we still hadn't even heard the records you know so then it was like oh yeah people going oh you you covered blah 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 and it's like no we haven't even heard that record do you know what I mean so it's, and that's it was kind a bit of strange. strange. And like going up the country my dad used to play it in the car and like yeah. we just used to laugh at it <laughs> <laughs> And then we ended up just jamming our own version and thought, oh, that's all right, actually. Yeah. It must be amazing for him, then, to have you guys on stage there in front of him singing the song that you kind of all grew up there together and have people screaming and clapping for you. It's so nice. Like, often, like, with the records, like, for example, um, Going Up the Country, which is like a six, it was done in the 60s, like, then you go back and you hear the proper original from the 30s, and it's like it's a lot. It's it's a lot more the kind of like way we like vibe it. Do you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and we haven't even heard the records, so I don't know. It's just about the the feel we put to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. And the whole uh, uh, Hawaiiana thing with you guys and those songs come from. I heard you at the Echo Show talking about it, but this being the closest you've ever yeah, actually yeah. been to Hawaii. So where did that entry yeah. come from? Well, I think it's yeah. it's from um, my grandpa. Because uh, my dad was born in India, and he, he used to play the Hawaiian guitar, you know. And they they got this was in the 50s, so Elvis was the thing, and they got some like cheap EP with like um, Heartbreak Hotel on one side, and this song Honolulu Rock and Roll on the other side by Eartha, by Eartha Kitt, and um, they used to play it on the gramophone, which they slowed down. So then we'd play it because our dad used to sing it to us, and then later on we heard the record, which was completely buggered because it had been played on the gramophone, so he couldn't really hear it properly, but that's how it came about. When's this Hawaii trip going to happen? Is this in the works yet? I don't know, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Somebody has to make that, make that happen for you guys soon. Yeah. Um, talk, hanging out with, with people like Chris Martin and Coldplay and some of these other gigs, what other artists have you been able to spend time with of that kind of stature, and what's that been like for you guys to kind of pal around with these, you know, superstars, as it were. Um, so no, we just, we don't, we get asked to do these gigs and it's like, it's like, yeah, okay. Um, we don't really accept them because, oh, they're celebrities or anything like that. If they're nice, they're nice people, then, you know, that's, that's good. It's always good to work with nice people and like Coldplay, they're really nice guys. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a, a good thing. Um, we yeah. did actually um, get asked to do Amy Winehouse's birthday party. Oh, yeah. So we um, turned up, set up all our gear and everything, waiting for hours, and she didn't turn up in the end. <laughs> <laughs> then we played the gig. <laughs> there you go. You did the perfect game of yeah. Winehouse. Yeah, I did it anyway. Mom. Her mum enjoyed it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get a chance to meet her after that? No. no. But apparently she wanted to have a jam session with us and that. But, um, so. <laughs> or send her a message. When we talk to her, we'll, we'll play it back. Whenever she she surfaces next, um, what what are your I know we've talked about this, but your hopes and dreams in the next few months, not long term, but with this record, if people are starting to hear your music, what do you hope people take away from Kitty Daisy and Lewis? Um, I'm not sh- well. We don't really know what to expect, really. Um, we just like in the UK when our album was released, like there was a lot of buzz when it first came out, and that was really exciting, like none of us expected that. So um, hopefully the same thing will happen over here. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're meant to be working on a new album at the moment, but I'm not sure if we're gonna get that together. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be good to maybe get out to like a slightly younger crowd as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess they can listen to some good music rather than like pop and stuff. Yeah. Like 
some like real music. Is there a sense of kind of turning people around, like especially when you play the younger crowd, like when you see them getting into it, like you've kind of accomplished something great now that they're listening to these songs? Yeah, when you do like festivals, like where there's like little kiddies and stuff, and they like start dancing and stuff, it makes you feel really good because when they're that young, they don't really judge music; they just love it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good cause, like when you see young people get into it because they've never heard it before. So it's good to know that they're hearing that kind of music. Do you know what I mean? My five-year-old's been digging it in the car, so... <coughs> yeah? It's, uh, oh, cool. it's true, that, that works, yeah. <laughs> um, who, dream dream collaborators, now that oh, these doors are opening up for you guys, is there, do each of you have one person you'd love to record with, share a stage with? They were dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. If you can go back in time. Uh, I'd rather just watch them rather than interfere with their music, do you know what right, I mean? Right, right. Yeah. They're like legends, really. They're yeah. just like... <laughs> that said, anyone else doing, the, doing music that you dig these days? That's, that Maybe not of that caliber of the legends that are, that are gone, but who do you respect and admire that are still doing their thing? <laughs> 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 Uh, Everybody sucks. Um, it's hard to say really because like a lot. I suppose of one of them is like our trumpet player Tan Tan. Yeah. Like yeah, he's yeah, yeah. he's like been around like playing gigs in the fifties and stuff and played with all these major artists like and he's friends with so many people like he's played on Beatles albums, Rolling Stones. He was with Georgie Fame. We've done the Motown tours and all this stuff. So he's like a walking legend like. And he's always telling stories and like mm -hmm. he's just like so hyperactive as well. <laughs> so he's running around and we're all trying to get sleep. He's like, hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> he's Jamaican. <laughs> but Paul McCartney's still kicking around and Ringo Starr mm -hmm. did they ask, you know, Dobby to collaborate with you guys. But it's not what it was then, so yeah. Yeah. Don't know, it's, it's like we've seen like Jody Lewis and Chuck Berry, but it's kind of disappointing because they've, they've just lost it really. Mm -hmm. I suppose what it is, it's like the backing bands like because that's what makes it, it's not just like whoever playing the music, it's their backing band which makes the whole sound and then yeah. when you see these people now they've just got session musicians you know with big mm. drum kits playing rock and stuff and then like Little Richard in the middle doing his thing on the piano, do you know what I mean? So, and, it, and it's not how it was, you know, the vibe isn't there. All those unsung heroes behind them are, yeah. are gone or sitting around somewhere else in the south. Yeah. Probably dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a shame because you want to remember them for what they were and the, mu the music that they played. When you go and see them now, it's, it's not the same. It's just like, do you know what I mean? It's completely changed. Yeah. It's more of like a, it's gone, it kind of changes, kind of cheesy, you know? Mm -hmm. And therein lies the beauty of what you guys are doing, so you can kind of bring the fresh, the fresh well, sense of people that may not... We try and, yeah, it's about the vibe, mm -hmm. which is what we try and get in there. Mm -hmm. Very good, I think we're good. Um...